Welcome to Conversations with Sloan Ivy. I am Sloan Ivy, and today I have the pleasure of having a conversation with an American artist by the name of Ted Ellis. Ted Ellis is a painter who paints on African American culture, and he has an exhibit here at Houston Museum of African American Culture called Pride, Dignity, and Courage. And today I will get to take you through that exhibit and ask him some questions about his life work and what being an artist and being a painter means to him. I hope you enjoy. Thank you for having us, Ms. Ellis. So Ms. Ellis, first I want to know, tell me when you knew you wanted to be an artist. Oh, I, uh, you know, I started very early. Uh, comic strips, comic books, Sunday comic strips, uh, Sam I Am to Eat, Green Eggs and Hand, the little books. Uh, you know, I was an avid reader at a, at a young age and uh, I had an interest in imagery and I, I would just draw what I saw. And so I would say, um, you know, four or five, and I remember doodling in kindergarten class, you know, we drew Road Runner, Bugs Buddy, uh, Moby Dick. Uh, you know, the, the other thing that we had, we used to drive, um, draw these drag strip race cars with these big fat tires, and everybody used to always look at each other and who had the who had the best um, drawing. So, you know, very very early, um, you know, the, the maturation in that. You know, you know, you know, you grow, you get a little older, you study, you learn a little bit more, you get a little bit more involved. You get introduced to other aspects of art, you know, art history, art literature, uh -huh. um, art techniques, and you know, I, I grew from there. So, about what age did you know that you were really talented at painting? Okay, so, so let's dismiss really talented. Okay. I never thought I was really talented. I was really passionate. Okay. So, okay. Uh, you know, a lot of passion there, and I wanted to, I wanted to improve. Mm -hmm. So I will always tell you, I ain't the best artist. I don't think I have much talent, but I, I just work at it. I constantly work at it. And uh, I knew, you know, you know, you know, you always read that little story about the little choo-choo train. Uh -huh. I could do okay. it, I could do it, I could do it. Or that tugboat, well, that's me. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work myself through it. And so, so work looks like a lot of talent. Uh -huh. Maybe it's interchangeably, but, but that's, that's who I am, and that's what, what, what keeps me going. And uh, with the so, work, with yeah, the work yeah. ethic. Okay. So, so I, I would, yeah, I would, I put more work ethic over talent. Okay. You know, and talent, work ethic, passion, talent. Passion yeah. will give you the talent. It will. Yeah, yeah. So tell me, okay, what inspires you? Because these are some beautiful paintings so, over so a great rich culture. So what inspires you to paint so these? So I've been painting professionally now a little bit over twenty five years. You know, each one of my pieces, I want to tell a story, a narrative. Uh -huh. um, I'm in love with myself. I'm in love with my community. Mm -hmm. I'm in love with my culture. I'm in love with my history. And so I think it needs to be told through the eyes and the lens of an artist like myself. And so, you know, I, I have a lot of passion. I have a lot of passion for learning, a lot of passion for history, um, experience. And, um, and so our story needs to have a voice from their own from mm -hmm. the lens and the eyes of an artist. And so that's what I do. So I provide a visual narrative. Okay. You know, my Buffalo Soldier, my Tuskegee Airmen, you know, a place of sanctuary, head to the fishing hole, where we find peace at, the spirituality and, and what, what these religious images provide, uh -huh. the imbuement of the passage of building an individual, not only physically and mentally, but spiritually. And so, you know, it takes on multiple meanings. You always say art, you know, speaks a thousand words. It, 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 it says even more than that. So tell me, when you're looking, that's something I always think about when I go to art galleries. When I'm looking at the painting, I'm like, what does the artist want me to know? Or what do you want people to think when they see your paintings? Well, um, you know, I, I, I want you to see strength. You know, I want you to see, uh, you know, um, power, mm -hmm. um, courage. Pride, dignity. You know, I want I, I, I want to be a reflection of who I am. You know, and, and, and what we've endured, and what I'll quit. You know mm -hmm. that you know we're gonna cross the finish line. May not finish first, but we're gonna cross, cross that finish line. Okay. You know okay. uh, that we are constructive individuals. That we are building. That we care. That we have tremendous feeling and passion for each other. And that that we are survivors. Survivors. Wow, powerful. Okay, so tell me, I want to know your favorite painting. There, I have, I already picked a few favorites in here, but you tell me yours. Uh, I, I, sentimentally, there's one that really sticks out to me, and uh -huh. it's the piece that I did. Um, 
more pressure than gold. Okay. And, um, and we think about family, we think about community, we think about the past, the present, and the future. Uh -huh. And as a, as a father, you know, my, my most prized possession is my children. Mm -hmm. And so this piece speaks to, you know, Trayvon Martin, who, um, who was killed. And, and, and speaking through this pain that that's that father, that's his child, his most prized asset. But not only for the father, but for the whole community that's involved in building the future. Mm -hmm. You know, and you see that this child is, is being reared and directed in the right manner. I mean, he has books in his hand. But you see this hovering shadow, shadow over him. And you see the shadow solidifying, you know, with a weapon. You know, very indicative of our most prized possession being a target yeah. in a hostile environment. Now, this is America, and this is how I feel. And so, you know, in preparation, when I let my child go, particularly my son, mm -hmm. that there's a threat out there. And um, what happened with Trayvon is so indicative of that. And so this is probably my most sentimental piece. I think the, um, the biggest impact has been these two pieces. Yeah, these are nice. You know, these are very nice. Know, journey one and journey two, from the slave ship to the cotton field, to the boardroom, to the president of the United States and beyond. And uh, I had a strong exhibition for the 150th celebration of the Emancipation Proclamation at Houston Community College. Uh -huh. And the space at the University of Southeast Campus is twice the space, so I made twice the impact. And when I looked at everything in there, I wanted to do one piece that would speak to everything in there. So when that exhibition opened, we unveiled this piece, The Journey oh, One. Okay. So after I, I, I went through the presentation, a student in the back raised her hand and says, where's the female piece? <laughs> so the exhibition <laughs> ended, right. it right. ended in a month, but on the third week, we unveiled the uh, female version of Look Journey. Look at that. And you see she's, also carrying a child, child. through it all. Yeah. And so, um, you know, just strong symbolism and messages in, um, in the art. And whether you're five years old or 80 years old, something should speak to you. Something should, should, should grab you. And, um, it, you know, it should teach you something or it should, it should have you want to ask a question. Mm -hmm. Why? What's going on here? So tell me about the 44th president. Tell me about this painting and what, well, tell me, me about the journey of this well, painting. Well, let me, let me, yeah, let me just tell you. So, you know, towards the end of my exhibition, we had to go here, mm -hmm. you know, in prayer and bending knee uh -huh. and sovereign to a greater power so that we could get here which is Bloody Sunday, which took them three tries to cross that bridge to walk 57 miles to Montgomery, Alabama, mm -hmm. to put the pressure on the federal government to usher into the law of um, the Civil Rights Act of mm -hmm. 1965, um, um, 64. The death of Dr. Martin Luther King, the mm -hmm. martyrdom, you see the bloodshed the fragileness of Rosa Parks mm -hmm. through that, that dense fog of racism, hate, and prejudice. You know, that sacrifice to sit down and change the course of history. Yeah. All of that led up to this opportunity, the 44th president of the United States. Now that's awesome, that's awesome. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece. So now that we're here, tell me about, so tell me about this exhibit here at the Houston Museum. African American culture. I see pride, dignity, and courage. I've seen those words. I've heard those words a lot. So tell me about it. Well, it's um, it's definitely 25 years of uh, of paint in history. It's a progression and a chronology from slavery um, up through Reconstruction okay. to civil rights to the age of Obama. It touches on on, on multiple themes: um, 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 education. Um, lifestyle, um, politics, service to country. There's a spiritual sense that you see the baptism and the church pieces in there. Um, you see some of the rural scenes. You see the simple living, the pleasures, and just living. Um, you know, through it all, mm -hmm. you know, you find uh, a place of resolve individually and collectively as a community and as a family. And um, you know, subject matters, um, the five kids at the chalkboard, 
Mm-hmm. Um, we own this land. The trilogy of civil rights, I am a man. Equal rights for all, one man, one vote. Mm-hmm. My precursor to the President of the United States, Obama check for President. Mm-hmm. Um, surviving Katrina. Yes. You know, what does that mean and imply? You know, this family on the top waving an American flag. Mm-hmm. Well, we always had an American flag in, in our family. Mm-hmm. My dad was a Korean veteran, and so I saw the flag. So how could you leave a person who has served his stranded for days on a rooftop? What country does that? Mm-hmm. And so tremendous amount of inequities um, in our country that we have to heal and we have to build to ensure that that we are accountable for what the Constitution stands for, for every living human being, you know, mm-hmm. the decency of living, of being human, and, uh, and being mindful of that. Uh, the journey one, the journey two, from the slave ship to the cotton field to the boardroom to the President of the United States. Wow, that's, that's, that's powerful. Yeah. That's powerful. So, so I want to encourage us to see that no matter how tough the circumstances have been or will continue to be, is that we rise. Mm-hmm. We continue to rise. We have an insurmountable amount of faith and hope and belief in a higher power to sustain us. All of that I want to come out of this exhibition. And, um, and if I do that, then, then, then um, I'm using my passion in a way that is extremely purposeful mm-hmm. and healing. And, um, and that leaves me with a wonderful legacy. Last question for you. If you could have a conversation with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Wow, dead or alive. That would be all of my ancestors. I mean, that would just be a lot of history and wealth, you know, mm-hmm. you know how they endured, where they came from, um, you know, where they at right now. So I can have an idea into the future. I already do, but but that would that it wouldn't be just one person. It would be a multiple of of, of a conglomerate of of a, of a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, it's a different experiences. It's sort of like when I travel and I go into different communities. You know, there's a different experience. You know, there there are environmental factors, there are communal factors, there are geographical factors mm-hmm. that 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 influence. And so you learn a little bit every time. So if I had a chance to sit with my ancestors, man, the things you, you know, could learn. the things I would learn <laughs> yeah. would, be, would be incredible. So, um, and it would be a plethora of wisdom and information versus having it from one, one um, transparent um, person or individual. That is wonderful. Well, thank you so much, so much for doing this. Thank you so much for sharing your passion with us, for doing this. This is beautiful. If you are in the Houston area, this exhibit will be here to June 20... June 25th. 5th. June 25th. Please come by, see Mr. Ellis, see this beautiful, beautiful story of pride, dignity, and courage. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Sloan (laughs) Ivy. I love that name. (laughs) Thank yeah. you. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. I hope you enjoyed the beautiful artworks I've got to show you today. And I hope that you felt the stories that Mr. Ellis paints through his pictures. I hope you felt them come alive. And that is what it's about, sharing your story. So go out and share your story today. Have a conversation with someone. And I'll see you next time.